Hello there friends and welcome back to my channel. It is Amy here and today I am going to document these fun photos of my BFF when she came to visit and we walked the bridge here in Charleston. So there is a very popular bridge here. There's actually a huge bridge run every year where you run over the bridge and it is um, worldwide. People from all over the world come to it. But we walk it every year when she comes to visit. And so we're going to document them today. And I'm going to share with you a fun technique using the Distressed Oxide inks. I don't use these a whole lot uh, and I love them. And um, I learned some fun techniques from fellow maker down in Australia, Janice. And I want to thank Janice for teaching me these techniques and we're going to make an eight and a half by 11 page today which is also something a little bit different than i've done in the past so i'm going to clear my desk and we're going to get started all right so the first thing i'm going to do is lay my all-purpose mat out this comes from close to my heart i love this mat it's got a silicone backing so it won't slip and slide on your surface you can ink on it stamp on it paint on it it does all the things i have a piece of white daisy cardstock and this is cut um a quarter of an inch smaller than eight and a half by 11 so it's eight and a quarter by ten and three quarters and i'm just going to take each of my distress oxides and apply ink direct to paper so i'm going to start at one end and just swipe and pick up then we'll do the next color and I'm going from lightest to darkest. So that was Salvage Petuna, Petunia. Now I'm using Peacock Feathers. And you can overlap them. Now we'll do Mermaid Lagoon. Oh, and the other thing we should do, I wet my stamp chamois. We're going to want to clean our all-purpose mat after each um, ink just so that they don't blend where we don't want them to blend. Okay, so now we've got the Mermaid Lagoon. If you've never played with the Distress Oxides, they are a creamier ink. Um, they're great for blending, and I have to admit, I have not done much direct to paper like this, and I thank Janice for opening my eyes to this. So again, I'm just swiping and then lifting. And then the last one, let me clean this again, is the chipped sapphire, just like that. Now I did, um, I came all the way to the end here. I didn't do all the way, I, I have a, a space up here. So I think what I'm gonna do, because I don't want to waste paper. We're going to try and do this one more time. And this is just an experiment. Okay, there we go. I like that. So there is the, um, this is going to be the left side. And we're going to mount it onto a piece of eight and a half by 11 black cardstock just like that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the right side and then I'll be back. All right, so there are my two pages and they are mounted onto the cardstock. And now what I wanna do is uh, mount my photos onto photo mats. So we're gonna put these aside and I have cut some black cardstock and some white cardstock, and we are going to double mat the photos. So I'll do one on camera, and then I'll do the rest off camera, and uh, come back on. So I have my photos are three by three and three by fours, and I am going to use a flip flap for one of the three by threes. So I like that double mat and I think it's going to allow it to pop on the page. So I'll go ahead and get the rest of the mat and be right back. 
All right, I got all of my photos matted and I did the double mat. I wanted the photos matted on a little bit of white daisy and then onto the black because I think that will allow the photos to pop a little bit more on the scrapbook page. Now I did want to show you, we are going to use a three by three flip flap for this picture. And the way I'm going to do it is have it so that it flips up like this. So what I'm going to do is just add this photo that I matted on the white cardstock right onto the black. And that way you can use the same black for the, um, for the mat. So it's going to flip up like that. So that's a quick little tip and these flip flaps are great. They have a little, uh, strip of adhesive. You can adhere these right on top of your page protector or on the page and alter the page protector. And I will be showing you that towards the end of this video. So now let's bring in the left page. And I'm thinking that we will have it go like this and like this. And again, I am um, kind of scrap lifting Janice's layout, but then putting my own spin on it. So this is going to go like this. And then I want the title is going to say bridge walk. So I used my thin cut slim alphabet number thin cuts. I love these thin cuts. Ran them through my die cut machine and I did them in both black and white, and I did several layers and then adhered them together off camera, one on top of each other. So that way they have some dimension and you'll see that I offset it them. So I started out with the black. I believe I have two of the black R's on top of each other. Then I added the white and I offset it. And I believe I have three layers of the white daisy and then two layers of the black R offset it again. So it gives it that shadow look and it is a nice thickness. When I want dimension and it's something thin like this, what I want to be dimensional, rather than trying to uh, cut my um, 3D foam tape, I will just cut multiple layers of the, the letters or the image, whatever you're using. And that makes it much easier to give it dimension. So what I'm thinking is we will have bridge like this. Maybe I'll bring this down a little bit. So I'm just dry fitting right now. And then we'll use, just like Janice had used in her page, the Prairie Alphabet. And I thought I would do walk and just stamp walk on my white daisy strip. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And um, I will be right back. I decided that I would go ahead and stamp the word walk on camera, just in case you're new to stamping. Um, I have my W on my one by one block and I am just seasoning that stamp by pressing it onto my skin to get that protective film off of the stamp. And I will uh, get a little piece of scrap paper just to test it out. And I have my foam piece of paper underneath that comes with all the Close to My Heart stamp sets. And I am going to stamp the W. I just have a half inch strip of white daisy cardstock. I'm gonna clean my stamp. These are so delicate, so I kind of just tap my stamp chamois onto it. And then we will get our A. Um, you can spell the whole word out on a block and stamp it once, but I find that I get, um, you can stamp the letters closer together when you do one at a time. 
So that's why I like to do them one at a time. So again, I'm just tapping it to tap that ink off. I'm using the black archival ink and it does stain a little bit. Uh, different colors stain quicker than others. That doesn't bother me. So your stamps may look dirty, but they're actually clean. Again, this L is very, very delicate. So I'm just tapping it with my finger. Larger stamps, I rub on my, my wrist. And this one, you don't want to press too hard because if you press hard, it's going to just kind of, uh, what's the word? Well, I'll show you. If you press too hard, you'll see it. you kind of get that. So I'm just going to carefully clean that. And then we will do the K. Now, if you don't have alphabet stamps, you could always just handwrite it if you want it to. You could use stickers, lots of different options. But I like this stamp set because um, it is small and it's easy to ink up and stamp. And I like the, the mixture of using thin cut letters with um, alphabet stamps. I even really enjoy mixing alphabet stamp fonts. That that always is a fun look to go go with as well. So there is our walk. Let me grab my paper trimmer and we will just trim this. If you've ever been to Charleston, let me know in the comments if you've walked or biked the bridge. You can always bike it. Um, we do that a lot. And if you're visiting, you can rent bikes. Um, and we walk it a lot too. Now I'm going to, I have a piece of black and I'm just gonna do a mat. So that was a half an inch. So I'm gonna do three quarters of an inch, just to give it a little bit of a border. And we'll add adhesive here. But if you ever come to Charleston, or if you live in this area and have not walked or biked the bridge, I highly recommend it. It is a whole lot of fun. And then we will just trim this. Oh, I think I trimmed that too close. Whoops, let's try it again. Peel that off. Let me measure this. So this is about three quarters of an inch. So let's go right there like that and see how we do there. I can always just center it on this. I like that much better. And I do have a little bit of adhesive on there so I can take my rub and remove eraser. And kind of just... Now when your rub and remove eraser gets like all these little build up, what I like to do is just take my scissors and trim that off. And then your eraser is as good as new. I love the rub and remove eraser. So I'll do the rest off camera, but just thought I mentioned that little tip to you. So there we have the rest of our title. So that's going to go right like that. And I do like this. And then I'm thinking I did pull a variety of stamp sets from my stash looking for a camera. I noticed that on Janice's, she used a camera on her title and I ended up liking this one. And this came from the World Is Your stamp set that I earned when I earned the incentive trip. 
from close to my heart. So as a maker, you can earn an incentive trip every year. And what was cool about the incentive trip for 2023 was you could choose to go anywhere in the world that you wanted. Close to my heart had never done that before. And the reasoning behind this was because of COVID and all the restrictions, they kept having to cancel trips because certain areas of the United States and Canada could travel, others couldn't travel. And um, so by doing it where we could choose where we wanted to go, you didn't run into that problem. So it was the first trip where people traveled by themselves or some consultants got together and traveled together. Um, but we always get a stamp set. And so this was the stamp set. So I do love this camera. I have lots of images with cameras. So this one, loving right now, there's that camera. There is a camera from a uh, story by Stacy. Some of these are retired. Some of them are from album retreats. And so what I did was I just stamped a bunch of them and, and picked the one that I liked the best. The other thing I thought would be fun to do was add some sunglasses because we had our sunglasses on. It was a very sunny day. And I pulled this set, Summer Greetings. This one is still available. It debuted last summer and it has thin cuts. So everything that has the green or the like glacier color, that means there's a thin cut for it. So I did uh, cut and stamp some pink glasses. And then this one has the seagull. So I do have some seagulls that I cut and I thought I would stamp them and maybe scatter them on the page. I don't know, we'll see. Here is a sampling of all the cameras. There's some more glasses that I, I cut. I didn't know if I wanted to do um, the sapphire or the lagoon. I like the sapphire because we're mounting it on the more lagoon colored distress oxides. So I thought I could do a little grouping there. And then I was trying to look for sneakers. And so in the Smarty Pants stamp set, we have the Converse. Now, even though we weren't wearing Converse when we went for our walk, I did like the size of this. And I had a bonus. There were a bunch already cut and stamped in my envelope. So I tend to do a bunch of thin cutting and stamping all at one time and the extras I'll stick in the envelope. So I did have two Converse already cut and stamped and I was thinking maybe I could do something like that and then pull in my journaling strip stickers and maybe add some strips for the journaling. There's not a whole lot to say um, about this other than we walked the bridge and maybe do the date. But I am thinking, I don't know, we may even use just one. We'll, we'll play around with that. And I'm going to keep them white, but maybe do some shading with, with some uh, of my tri-blend markers. And not sure if I want to put the glasses up there or here, we'll, we'll kind of play around with it. But that's what I'm thinking. Let's go ahead and stamp our seagulls. And maybe I'll do the seagulls in a sapphire because they're gonna be up on that more lagoon color. So I'll pull out my stamp set. And here is the seagull. And I have two of them in case I want to put one on, I could put two on the left side or put one on the left and one on the right. We'll see. I'm going to get my scrap paper and just ink this up. Yep, that looks good. So another question for you. Are you a person who stamps and then thin cuts? or do you thin cut and then stamp? I know I believe I am in the minority. I like to thin cut first and then stamp. And not very many people seem to do it that way. Okay, cleaned my stamp. I'm gonna put it back on the care sheet. And if I wanna add more seagulls, I can. So we can see how this looks maybe. I don't know, 
we'll see. But that is what I'm thinking. And I really like how the bridge word really pops. So that will be the left side. We'll add our journaling there. And then for the right side, it's kind of a similar pattern. You'll see how I have from when I did the swooshing, where I picked up the swooshes, those are on the outer sides of the layout. So now for this page, I'm thinking maybe of going like this, and this will flip up like that. But what I did is on my Cricut, I cut a bridge. I found an image, let me move this. I found an image that looked most like the, the Ravenel Bridge here in Charleston. And I cut this and I did the same thing to the bridge as I did to the word bridge. I cut, cut several of them. I believe I cut four and then adhered them one on top of each other. So there is dimension. And I thought I could put that right down there and have this like that. And then, I don't know, maybe do, maybe do it up. Maybe I'll even just have, you know what I'm thinking? I might go like this. So that way the seagulls are flying towards this page. Even though these were taken at the beginning of the walk, I kind of like this better with the seagulls over here. The other thing I am thinking is, um, yeah, I think I am liking that better. And then this could flip up and I can um, add a little something there if I want, or I could just leave it like that. But I'm liking, maybe should we add another seagull? And just do the seagulls on that page. And then we can have our journaling here. I think I am liking that. So let me get this adhered. And then we might add some little splatters with the white gloss spray. And I did bring in some of the sparkles and then I've got a variety of dots. I've got the black and white, I've got the blue and the teal. So we'll see if we wanna add some of that. So let me adhere all this and then I'll come back and we'll see what we're gonna to do to finish this up. All right, I've got my photos adhered down and I went ahead and printed out a, a, another three by three photo and just matted it there like this. And this is going to go up like this. Um, and I was just thinking, I, I did already adhere that down, but I could have even done that like that. But that's okay. We're going to go like that. And then I like my seagulls there. Let's adhere those down. I was thinking about maybe adding a little bit of color to them, but I decided I'm going to keep them white because there's so much color in the background. We go like that. Um, let's see, maybe do a little bit more over. Stagger them a little bit. So do that. And then I haven't adhered the camera down yet. I do like that. I did print out a little bit of journaling on the sticker journaling strips. And what I did is I took my anti-static pouch and I took the stickiness off of them so that I um, could kind of play with the placement. And it says, what a beautiful morning. We had to walk the bridge, the perfect way to start the day. And I didn't know if I was going to add some color to them by sponging, maybe some blue, but I think I'm gonna leave them right like that. And then 
I have my sneakers and I have my sunglasses. I did pull out my brown gray blend marker and I'm just gonna outline the sneaker to give it a little bit of color. And then I'll go in with the blender, which I like to call the blender an eraser because it's more of an eraser than a blender. It kind of takes ink away. So more or less what the blender is, is just a, a colorless marker. And I'm just going over the outline and then I'm even coloring all the white space. Now I had stamped this, oh, many moons ago and I stamped extras and found them in the envelope stamp carrier sheet. So I like to use the archival black ink and the archival black ink is not recommended if you're going to color with alcohol markers or with watercolors, but if you let it dry, as you can see, there is no bleeding. And I do like that. And I did another one off camera and we could kind of play with these. Maybe stick this up here a little bit more. And then my logic was to fill in with some of that gloss spray and um, maybe some enamel dots. Maybe something like that. And then we do have the glasses. I didn't know if I wanted to do something like this. or if I wanted to put them up here like this. Um, I think I'm liking it down here. And then we'll do the sneakers. Do we want one sneaker or two sneakers? You go like this. Or we could go, no, don't like that. I think we'll just kind of go like that. And I am liking that and I like the camera there. So let's adhere that. And then we'll go in and strategically put some of the splatters with the white gloss spray. So do that. And then I think I'm gonna do the glasses with some 3D foam dots. The, the foam dots are, um, retired and they are now out of stock, but you can get the foam tape. So I am liking that. I'm liking this a lot. We've got to do the camera and I'm gonna just adhere that flat and we'll put that right there. Let's grab our dots. And I'm thinking it might be fun. Maybe even do a teal. I have been organizing in my stamp room and I have the photo organizer that Close to My Heart came out with last year where you get all the boxes that fit the four by six photos. I have several of the organizers. Some are for photos, but some are for embellishments. And this is working great because I'm using it because I see where it is. So I love these. Unfortunately, those organizers are on the retired list. So once they're gone, they're gone. 
I did order a few more. Um, my daughter uses them in her classroom and uh, they just work great. So I do highly recommend these. I was thinking of maybe putting uh, an enamel dot and at first I thought the blue, but maybe I'll, maybe I'll do that one. This, the medium size fits perfectly right over that dark blue dot. And we'll do a, a slight, do we like that? Maybe, no, I think maybe I might do the darker one so it stands out a little bit more. So we'll put that right there like this. These dots are um, thinner than the ones we used to carry. So I like to take them off with my, my uh, piercing tool. So I like that. And then I didn't know, maybe we'll do, We'll get the, the blue pack and we'll do the dark and we'll put a little star here, kind of like the Converse have. That's kind of cute. I like that. And then I didn't know if we wanted to sprinkle any, maybe we'll do something up here with the blue. Mm. Let's uh, do some strategic dots here. Let me grab my box, my splatter box, I like to call it. And we'll put our page in here. And then get my... So I'm taking my white gloss spray and let me cover up the pictures. I thought about doing this before I adhered the pictures, but I didn't know exactly where the pictures were gonna go. So I'm just kind of dotting. And then I think I'm gonna do a little bit of a spray. If you do a half a spray, just half, you'll get little dots. So those intentional ones are nice and big and I like that. And then maybe we'll hide this there and then Then it's easy to get carried away with this. I think I want a little bit more of a spray right here. Ooh, that was a little bit too much, but that's okay. All right, I'm liking that. And we'll do the other side. And let that dry. I put this in. And I'm gonna take my, I'm just gonna do a half a, a, a press down halfway. And maybe do halfway here and halfway here. Maybe halfway there. And then maybe just do a few little All right, I am liking that. So we'll let this dry. And one another tip, when you use this glass spray, when you're done, make sure you clean the nozzle really good and that will avoid it from getting clogged. So I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll see if there's anything else that we want to add to this and um, finish it up. All right, so the gloss spray has dried and I am happy with the way this came out. I love the colors. 
I love how the, the brush strokes of the Distrex Oxides kind of makes it feel like an ocean. And um, yeah, I am pleased with this. So like I mentioned, we are going to put this in a flip flap so it flips up like that. So I thought I would do that on camera in case you are not familiar with the Close to My Heart flip flaps. I'm gonna go ahead and put that right inside the flip flaps. The flip flaps are a lot like the page protectors. It's a thick, really good quality. So you don't have to worry about it ripping. I'm tearing off that little protective strip that um, protects the adhesive. This folds down and the fold is already on the protector so it folds perfectly. And then you just wanna make sure that you're folding it down so that the sticky adhesive strip is on the back so it will stick to wherever you're going to put it. And I'm gonna put this right here like that. I like that. And then it will flip up like this. I could add um, a, a journaling block or another photo there. And I just may do that. I may print out another photo and put it there um, after I get done filming. But let's go ahead and put this in a page protector so I can show you how to alter the page protector so that this will stick out of the page protector and you can flip it up. So the first thing you wanna do is know what side the page is gonna go on. So this is gonna go like this. So I wanna make sure I'm using a page protector and I have the holes on the inside because it's gonna, um, uh, go into the album that way. So I'm going to put my page protector in like this so that the holes are on the right. And then what I'm going to do is take my ruler and I am going to draw a line right above where that fold of the flip flap was and get my pencil and I am just gonna draw a line. So then when we take this out, you can see that line right there. Hopefully the camera is picking it up. Then I'm gonna stick my little mat in here because we're going to cut that slit but i only want the slit on this one side of the page protector so you want to have something um in between the two now you can use your scissors our scissors work great because they're very sharp or you could use a um um uh, an exacto knife. I'm going to use my ruler and excuse me if you see my head in here, but we're just gonna cut that slit. I'm going to make sure that it went through. I think I want to go just a little bit farther. A little bit farther than that. There we go and we'll take this out and then we'll slip this back in and I don't think I cut all the way I didn't cut far enough so let me put this back in and we'll cut a little bit more this back in and bring our flip flap in like that 
And there we go. So it flips like that. And I think I'm definitely gonna put another photo there. I'll take pictures and I will put it on my um, Instagram and my Facebook groups. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did and could give me a thumbs up, if you don't already subscribe and would be willing to hit that subscribe button, you can share this with others and leave me a comment. That just tells YouTube that you like what you're seeing and you wanna see more and it helps me to grow. I'm one away from 500 followers today, which is June 22nd. I'm hoping to get to 1,000 really soon. So I just really appreciate your support, and we'll catch you on the next video. Bye-bye.